Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are covering the effortless way, which is the principle of least action. And why is this important? It's important because most people unconsciously believe that their manifestations are at a distance from them when they're in their visual scenes, when they're in their imaginal clips. They're unconsciously believing that it's something at a distance from them. So they're, so they're automatically at that point, they're thinking of it or not thinking from it. So they're seeing it at a distance from them. So when you understand the effortless way and the principle of least action, it's going to shock time sense. You're going to learn how to shock time sense. You're going to learn how to activate the positron, which Richard Feynman won the Nobel Prize on, which is a positive running electron. And once you shock time sense, then you have done it and you're no longer daydreaming. You're not using, you're not visualizing as a daydream in the third person now you're actually assuming that you have it and you're actually from the first person you're imagining in the first person and thinking from it as if it's happening right now not at a distance from you because that's the biggest fallacy that's the biggest downfall that people have when they're trying to manifest something is they're they're putting it at a distance from them and least action in the effortless way we explain that very very well in this chapter neville goddard and i'm going to break this down for you give you my narrative with it to better help you understand that and walk you through this because this is a big stumbling block and it's very important to understand the principle of least action so let's go ahead and get started here this is chapter 14 the effortless way the power of awareness by neville goddard okay so the principle of least action it governs everything in physics okay from a from the path of a planet to the path of a pulse of light least action is the minimum of energy multiplied by the minim the, the minimum of time. Okay, so least action is the minimum of energy multiplied by the minimum of time. And I'm going to explain that to you. Therefore, in moving from your present state to the desired state, so your present moment when you're trying to move from your present state to the state desired, which is the thing that you want, you must use the minimum of energy and take the shortest possible time. And you do that by assuming it. But I'm going to break this down and better help you understand this, okay? Your journey from one state of consciousness to another is a psychological journey. So you're only going on a psychological journey. You're not going on a physical journey. You're not. There's nothing at a distance from you because distance is only relevant in the physical world so but there is no real physical world everything is psychological so the only site the only world that it really exists is a psychological world which is an internal world which is you pushed out so there is a connection you have a, a connection with the psychological journey so when you think of things psychologically everything is connected but when you think of things physically there are disconnections from everything and everything is the things are at a distance but really the world itself, the physical world, isn't real. It's a hologram. So you must understand this when it comes to least action, and that'll help you better understand it and how to, to use and activate the positron, activate time sense, and actually make it real. That way you're living in it in the first person. You're creating your scene in the first person, and you're thinking from it, not of it. Okay. So to make the journey, you must employ the psychological equivalent of least action. And the psychological equivalent is a mere assumption. The law of assumption. Okay, so the day you fully realize the power of assumption, you discover that it works in complete conformity with this principle. Okay, it works by means of attention minus effort. Okay, so when you go on a psychological journey, you're not using you're not using any effort. Okay, you don't have to use any effort. And once you can develop the muscle of the mind, you can use your attention. So it works by means of attention minus effort. So when you see you develop the muscle of the mind. And you can hold your attention in your imaginary clip, in your imaginal act. You can actually stay in there without it drifting, and it's easy for you. And then you understand the psycholo it's a psychological journey, not a physical journey, and that everything is connected, that creation is finished. You've done it. Okay, so that's when you, when you understand this down to your core beliefs, then you can create anything you want in your life. There's nothing that can stop you. You can manifest anything and any stumbling blocks that anyone has ever had or ever will have is based on this and once you can overcome this obstacle then you can manifest anything you want in your life but it all starts with that attention and then a minus effort understanding that creation is finished so build the muscle of the mind and know that creation is finished down to your core beliefs in your heart you know this you know it's a fact that's when you can create whatever you want and nothing can stop you. You will not have any issues ever manifesting anything into your life. Okay, so thus, with least action, through an assumption, you hurry 
without haste and reach your goal with that effort without effort okay so you hurry without haste and reach your goal without effort okay so because creation is finished creation is absolutely finished okay so what you desire already exists okay it is excluded from view because you can see only the contents of your own consciousness okay so it is excluded from your view so the things that you want in your life already exist but they're excluded from your view because you can only see the contents of your own consciousness at this present moment so it is the function of an assumption to call back the excluded view and restore full vision so once you go into your imaginal act and you create the scene you create the thing that you want then it becomes in your full vision now and you're thinking from it so now you've got it you have got it you've got your attention you know it's minus no effort. you're not using any effort because once you develop the muscle of mind it becomes easier to even understand what consciousness is and knowing that creation is finished okay so it is not the world but your assumptions that change it is not the world but your assumptions that change an assumption brings the invisible into sight invisible into sight because you are your imagination your true self is your imagination that's your true self. So when you imagine something in your when you're imagining yourself in a in an imaginary scene in your mind, that's the real you. This is not the real you. That's the real you in imagination. All right? So you must understand that. So it is not the world but your assumptions that change. An assumption brings the invisible into sight. It is nothing more nor less than seeing with the eye of God, okay? IE imagination, okay? The Lord for the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Samuel 16, 7. The heart is the primary organ of sense. Okay, so you ever felt that when you're actually trying to create something that you actually can feel it into your heart? That's because it's the first cause of experience. Okay, the heart is. The heart is the primary organ of sense, hence the first cause of experience. When you look on the heart, you are looking at your assumptions okay so assumptions determine your experience and we all know that assumptions connect you with the thing that you want so assumptions determine your experience so watch your assumptions with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life so we've gone over this before with creating your you've created the world that you're living in now everything that you're experiencing in your world is from your past emotional charges thus your assumptions so everything you've created in the life that you are now, you have to take full responsibility of that. But you can change it. So don't get all upset about it if your life's not the way that it is. Understand that you can actually change your world right now with your assumptions. By understanding what you're emotionally charged about, you are attracting more of that into your life. Because when you become emotionally charged about something, you're actually assuming that state as fulfilled. So it's going to be created into your world in the future. So be very careful. And that's why he says this. Watch your assumptions with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of your life. So everything, all your emotional charges, everything you've reacted to has created the life that you're living in now. But you have the privilege now of changing it. By changing it, by understanding that this is how you create. And once you understand that this is how you create, be emotionally charged about the positive things in your life, the great things in your life. If you get a boatload of money for something, just become emotionally charged about that. And if something bad happens to your life, like you've had a bill that comes in or someone wants to take money from you or something happens that you don't like, do not become emotionally charged. Just turn the other cheek to it, basically what the, like what the Bible says. Turn the other cheek to that negative result and then focus on something that you want. Become emotionally charged about the, the things that you do want in your life. And then those will be created into your following days after that. Okay, so... And it's also very important awareness and building the develop the, developing the muscle of the mind. And you once you have developed the muscle of the mind in meditation or doing exercises, you can actually slow time down in the present moment because the present moment is the only moment that's real. Is that when you can assume something, is when you if you can and when you can slow time down, you can actually get the moment to slow down. You will be able to assume something and be more conscious of your reactions. To your day-to-day -day lives and it's very important because assumptions have the power of objective realization so every event in the visible world is a result of an assumption or an idea in the unseen world okay so the present moment is all important the present moment is the most important moment there is it's the only moment there is so when you can meditate and slow the mind down and control it 
then you can live in this present moment, and that's when you become an ultimate creator, a master manifester. Okay, so for it is the only present moment that your our assumptions can be controlled. Basically, he's saying it right here. The present moment is the all important moment. For it is the only, but it, for it is only in the present moment that our assumptions can be controlled. Okay, so the future must become the present. In your mind, if you would wisely operate the law of assumption, the future must become the present in your mind if you would wisely operate the law of assumption. So meditation, um, b- developing that muscle of the mind to be able to slow time down, and that way you can work on your assumptions in the present moment without your mind drifting everywhere. So assuming that. So that's a. we're going to go back to that again. That muscle of the mind is so important, guys. It's so important to develop that muscle of the mind. The future must become the present in your mind if you would wisely operate the law of assumption. The future becomes the present when you imagine that you already are what you will be when your assumption is fulfilled. Okay, so the future becomes the present when you imagine that you are already what you will be when your assumption is fulfilled. Be still is least action. So meditation, being still is least action and know that you are that which you desire to be. Okay, so all these steps we just went over explains how you can do that. The end of longing should be being. Okay, so you're not you're not in that state of longing like you don't have something. So you you have to end that the longing feeling. Okay, so it should be being. You should be being. You should be in the moment, in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. Translate your dream into being. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Perpetual construction of future states. This is actually big right here. He goes over the daydream because that's all we're doing. We're when we're if you're visualizing and you don't have control of your attention, you don't understand that creation is finished. You don't understand the positron. You don't understand these things, and you don't understand that the world that we're living in is an internal world projected outwardly. Then all you're doing is right here. He says it. All you're doing is it is a simply is simply a futile daydreaming. All you're doing is daydreaming. And you're not creating anything, okay? So it's very important to understand these and take these steps. That way you can change from the futile daydreaming into an actual construction of an event that will come into your life. Actually, in your imaginal scene and create it and make it vividly real to you, okay? So I'm going to read this here. Perpetual construction of future states without the consciousness of already being them, that is... Picturing your desire without actually assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the fallacy and mirage of mankind. It is simply futile daydreaming. It is simply futile daydreaming, guys. All right, guys, I really enjoyed this chapter. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a recap of this chapter, break it back down for you. This is chapter 14, The Power of Awareness by Neville Goddard, The Effortless Way. Okay, so this is the principle of least action. Okay, so you must understand least action because it is vitally important to understand it because it governs everything in physics, okay? From the path of a planet to the path of a pulse of light. And that's how you activate the positron because you don't have to go to a great distance in order to, to get the thing that you want, whatever you're trying to manifest. You don't have to go at a great distance and go searching for it. Everything exists now because you're living in a psychological world where creation is finished. And the real world is a psychological world of your imagination, There is no external world. There is no physical world. The physical world that you see in your 3D world is actually artificial and it was it's all created internally. So that so least action is understanding that. And when you and using the law of assumption, you actually can connect with something because you understand that the physical world isn't real. So when you understand that the physical world isn't real, then you don't have to travel anywhere to assume to get something, to manifest something, or to connect with it. You don't have to travel anywhere to get it. The law of assumption teaches that, and that's what it is. That's the essential component of the law of assumption is understanding that everything is internal and your outside world is just an illusion. So everything is already connected, everything is already created, and everything is already finished. All you have to do is connect with it to manifest it by assuming that you already have it because we're connected to everything already as it is. All right, guys, and that's how you connect the positron. That's how you use the positron. That's how you activate the positron and shock time since. All right, guys, I love you guys very much. And give me one thing you guys are grateful for in the column box below.